All right, just wanted to do a quick video on this RFID uh, controller that I bought it a couple years ago. I meant to do some stuff with it. Um, just really never got to it. Just felt like doing something with it tonight. So went through it and looked at the instruction sheet. I don't know. It's pretty rough. Uh, they have it set up here. There's pin one, two, one through eight. It matches up with some wiring on the back, as you can see. There's a bus you can wire to. Nice screw terminals, though. Uh, one and two is ground or 12 volt positive, then ground. And then the confusing part here it has lock, and it has lock positive. Um, I wasn't sure what was going on there. And then I went down here to the end. It's the bell, and what that is is that's just a. Uh, Normally open switch, you press it on the front right here, and that just closes and then would ring uh, your doorbell. So this, let's, if this was going to replace your doorbell on the front of your house, let's say if you're going to use it for a lock, uh, that's where you put your doorbell in, which is kind of nice. Um, then they have the, it says open, and I wasn't sure if open meant open and it wasn't used or what and then I thought you know what I bet if you have it locked you would need a way to open it from the inside and sure enough that's what it is it's the opening switch so I have a switch set up here um, going to those terminals and here again um, just a normally open switch you press it it'll open the door the next terminal it, it says lock and push they don't have it written here uh, but I Tried working with the lock uh, button or the lock contact. Wasn't able to do much with it, but the push um, does change when you press the button or activate the lock. And there's a up in this corner, I'm gonna take the back off here. Um, if I can get this off easily, but yeah. yeah. Let me just flip this up. You'll see right here, it's, norm it's on a set to a normally closed or normally open option. And that's for the relay. So there actually is a relay on the board. It's right here, uh, low power relay, but that's good for isolation. And uh, yeah, so it's set for normally open, normally closed. So I have it set so that I wanted to energize it and then run the uh, striker. And I had a striker here, I put it away, but let me get it out real quick. This is what I was going to use, <clears throat> but then I noticed on it, it's, six, it's, it's marked as the 16 to 24 volt, and this uses 12 volts. Um, here again, I might look on the, the traces on the board if there's a relay. I don't see why I couldn't uh, just use that to, uh, you know, to having a separate power supply for this, being I'm using a pretty light power supply to run the board. On the other hand, maybe the smart thing to do would be just to find a 12 volt strike get a little heavier power supply and then just have only have one. So it's something I have to look into. But just for, for just for testing purposes and because these instructions are horrible the way they're translated, at least I have that working. So let me just flip this over here. I'll show you what we got. Get the instruction sheet out of the way. So when I turned it on, we get that in, initializes the system. I'll, I'll turn that LED out of the way so it's not directly into the into the uh, camera. So you'll you'll see it though. So then um, to program it, you press the uh, pound, leave go, and then all the lights come on. Then you put in the passcode. The middle light goes out. Now you know that you went entered into programming mode okay i'm not going to go ahead and already have this one program so i think if i just wait here um yeah three beeps it goes out of program that's so somewhat i guess you just you don't walk away from it but what we did was we were able to program this chip in and i'm not sure if i can bring it up but there is the number on the chip i assume all these are uh are unique and here again I don't know if I'm letting a security uh, this is a security uh, problem by letting people see the number but hey whatever that's what I have 
Um, I don't, I'm kind of new to this, so I'm not sure how it is. I would assume, being it's a hard coded, it would have to have a unique code in that. So that that makes sense. So what you do is you set this in the program mode, then it it you swipe it over the front. It remembers that in memory as something that you want to open or have it open, and then it it uh, then you save that setting, and then it works power on, power off. It it actually writes it to the the memory of the chip. So if I bring this close, it turns on the light because it closed the relay. Now look, I, I won't talk this time, you actually hear the relay. You, know, you get a beep and the relay and then the light. Okay, so if I go over here now, I'm inside the building and I need to get out. Of course, if I'm running a mag lock or something with this, it's going to hold the door shut no matter what. If I'm using a uh, uh, a regular door that has a uh, using a regular striker like I was showing, I mean it would be a panic bar or something like that. I would just go out through that. But if in this case I need to push the switch and I get the same thing, push the switch, activates the light. So a downside to that would be with the control with this. Someone could tear this off the front of your, if you had this on your house, they lift it off. Now, when you do that, on this side, there is a, a, a switch here. It's down in this corner. And that's a, uh, you can tell that the front's been uh, tampered with when you take it off there. And when you do that, you have a lockout. So they don't see that. But if you press this in, it puts the system back in operation mode so I mean anybody that wants to tamper with the thing they're gonna get I guess they're gonna get in there no matter what right but that, that's the only thing I noticed it was a little bit funky I thought maybe if once it was tampered with it might wipe the memory or it might disable the thing for a period of time of course if you're in the back side of the thing you're gonna have access to the power you might have access to the relay a little bit of playing around the wires you get the door to open so I guess it's just supposed to keep the honest people out but that's so what we can do is we go ahead and put the cover back on. There we go. Go. This is the programming switch, by the way. You fire it up in one and two mode first, the way the instructions read. Then you power down, you move it over to two, three mode, power back up again, take the power, uh, disengage power, shut it off, go back to one and two, power it on, and then you're in regular that resets the password back to the default, which is one, two, three, four, five. So that's that's it right there. That's the uh, RFID reader. This is the one you get with, uh, you get a bag of chips. Of course, none of those are gonna work, right? But look, it's gonna get mad because I'm putting ones that are on program in there. But there, you get a bag of chips. This one, I did a couple years ago. I got the bag of chips and the, and the uh, the little RFID tags here, little, I guess put that on your keychain, just bring it close to it. I was curious about how close I could get um, before it would read. So that's like, let's do that for the side. I don't know if you noticed it when I flipped it on the back side, you can't see it now, but the coil that reads is going around the perimeter of the box right inside. So it does make sense. The distance is about the same around the perimeter. And of course then in the front, and notice they actually get closer to it. Um, if I'm right in the center, cause I'm actually still reading, it has to go to the perimeter to read. So even though it shows you should be there, Actually, you should go for one of the sides for, for quickest read. So there you go. That's RFID with tags. I'm going to buy a couple of the credit cards, too, and see how they work. But I want to get next to be the striker, and I would like to put this on the house. And uh, I think it would be kind of cool. And what I would do is pro there's another option where you can program a passcode. To enter in the password if you don't have the uh, key and then it would uh, would uh, run that too another cool thing with this could be um, being that it just runs a relay 
and maybe get override it with another relay, come off of that would be, this would probably be the simplest thing, 12 volt relay, and then put it in line with your garage door opener, set with these on the side of your house for your garage door opener. And then if you just, if you happen to be walking around with your key, your key and you want to open the door from the outside, you would just, uh, just, you know, run your key up against it or enter in a passcode and your door would go up. So I, I think that could be neat. And of course you can do more than one. I, the directions don't say what the limit is. Um, oh, there we go. Memory volume, 250 standard users. I'm not sure what a standard user is, but it would hold 250. This particular reader will 250. I know I've seen one with more memory and they'll hold a thousand. So there you go. See you in the next video.